Welcome to Whiskey's The Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and you guys are watching my first Friday flight fight. When this video first is published, this is going to be the first Friday in June, June 2nd, and I'm gonna head out to Seattle, Washington. I'm gonna be taking a look at an American single malt distillery, Westland Distillery. If you guys are new to the channel or you're not familiar with the first Friday flight fights, basically what I do is select a distillery and I look at their specific lineups, I know them, I taste them, and then I rank them in the order in which I like them the most. Some of the flight fights that I do, I'll try to guess what they are, but these are so incredibly different that there's no reason to do them blind. So let's go ahead and jump into glass number one and let you guys know what's in it. Westland Single Malt coming in at 46% ABV. This is their standard release. And I have to refer to my notes on this because there is a lot going on in here. This is aged a minimum of 40 months, so a little bit over three years. The first thing I'm getting is chocolate malt. And let me read what's in here. So they have Cooper's Reserve New American Oak, Cooper's Reserve Used American Oak. They do a first fill X bourbon, a first fill X Oloroso hogshead and butts, second fill X Oloroso hogshead and butts. And then the grain bill, I believe they have like five different grains in here. They have the Washington Select Pale Malt, the Munich Malt, Extra Special Malt, Pale Chocolate Malt, Brown Malt, and then they have a Baird's Heavily Peated Malt. So like I said, there's a ton going on in here. And my sister, if you guys know Mary Bridget, she joins the channel every now and then. She's like a peat hound. We had this the other day. I didn't smell the peat in there, but she did immediately. And now that she has mentioned it, I do get some peat. For me, it's very, very slight, but it's there. This is mainly a chocolate malted, roasted coffee toffee kind of single malt. Moving on to glass number two, Collier second edition. This is 50% ABV. This is part of their outpost range. Their outpost range single malts are squarely designed to bring out the types of malt that they're using. Not a whole lot of barrel influence here, but it's heavily based on their malted barley. Right on the label, this is basically a five year single malt. It's aged four years, 357 days. 50% ABV, and on the nose, this is very citrus heavy, a little bit leaning more towards the lemon than lime. They don't have as many casks involved because again, they want to highlight the barley that they're using. And the cask that they do have here is first fill X bourbon and second fill ISC Cooper's Reserve. I don't know what ISC is, so if you guys know, let me know in the comments down below. Again, like I said, initially it is citrus forward on the nose and they're using a talisman barley. Next up, third glass, Garyana fifth edition. This is again, part of their outpost range. And instead of being grain centric, this is actually wood centric. The casks that they're using here will be the first fill X bourbon with the Corcus Alba. They use 64% of that and then the Virgin Corcus Gariana, 36% casks in here. And the Corcus Gariana is gonna give it that unique note that they were looking for. This is a species of oak that is native to the Pacific Northwest. And it does have a woody, smoky, peaty note to it. And the grain bill that they have here is just to the Washington Select Pale Malt, along with the Baird's Heavily Peated. 50% ABV, and this is aged anywhere from 45 to 73 months. And so far, all three of these are definitely different on the nose. We got like a chocolatey malt here, a citrus note here, and a peated note in this one. Moving on to glass number four. This is a single cask, 7762, coming in at 50% ABV. I ended up getting this bottle directly from the distillery and had it shipped here. This is finished in Washington Port. It's coming in at 50% ABV. Seven years age stated, right on the label. And wow, definitely port, definitely sweet. And it says they're using five malt barley. And I don't know if that's the name of the barley that they're using or if they're actually using five different types of malted barley. Whatever the case is, it smells really good based on that port finish. Smells really good. Now let's go ahead and move on to the fifth bottle. Single cast select 2635. This is actually matured in PX hogsheads. The barley that they're using is Washington Select. Oh my gosh. And this is nothing more than sugared dark raisins, figs, plums, prunes, dates, all of that is in here. And it's, that's the reason why I have the lids on all these. The second I take this off, 
If you ever had a heavily peated scotch or a heavily peated whiskey, as soon as you open the bottle up or as soon as you pour it, it just consumes the room with that smell. So I put a lid on this for a reason, knowing that the second I open it up, it's going to just spread like crazy. And I don't really want that to influence these other four. This one has the highest AB of all of them. It's 55.3% and it's also aged seven years right on the label. Smells absolutely amazing. If you like PX, this is definitely the way to go. Now that we've got the initial nosing out of the way, let's go ahead and run through and taste all of these and rank them, see what I think. Oh, their standard release is fantastic. You end up getting a tiny amount of peat, not very much. I'm kind of becoming a little bit more peat blind than I thought I was, but if you search for it, it's in there. But this is mainly on the palate, a chocolate malt roasted toffee and caramel bomb. This is really, really good. Collier second edition, remember this had the citrus note to it. Clean, crisp, sharp, but not in a bad way. The citrus and the barley shines through on here. Very, very good. Fifth edition, Gariana. Lightly peated, toasty, woody. There's a little bit more depth in here. More of the wood is coming through rather than the barley. If you like peated scotches, you're definitely gonna like this one. Single cask, port finished on this one. This is evenly well-rounded, good amounts of ABV. That port finish comes through rather nice. Easy sipper, not as complex as the Gariana. I don't think you really need to think much about this one. It is what it is and it's very good. All right, single cask, PX matured. Mmm, figs, dates, really sweet, dark raisins. This is dessert in a glass. I've said it before, I'll repeat myself. If you like PX, this one is amazing. All right, nosing and tasting them one time, I think it's pretty much clear on which one I think is going to be the winner. I'm gonna put the fifth edition Gariana in first place. This one seems to be the most complex. It's the one that you can dissect the most. It unfolds with the flavors. You can nose it all day long and get different things out of it. It's not as sweet as the PX Hogshead one, but as much as I like the PX, I'm gonna put this one in second place with a caveat. I don't think I'll be able to drink more than one of these. It's a dessert in a glass. It's very sweet. That PX is really, really strong. And although I do like the PX flavor, it might be a little bit too overpowering to enjoy over the course of a night. So this is pretty much a one and done, but I like this absolutely the most out of all of them. But I can only drink one at a time, so that's why this is going in second place. Third place is gonna be their standard release, their single malt. Chocolate, toffee, caramel, a little bit of peat. This is an all day sipper. It's complex enough that you're going to be able to dissect it, talk about it. It's not nearly as sweet as the PX, so you can actually go in for it a little bit more than just one. A really good American single malt. It's the least expensive one of the line, which brings me to my fourth place, which is going to be the port finished. The reason why this is in fourth place is it's just a one note wonder. If you like port, you're gonna like this one, which leaves the grain in fifth place. And just because these are in first to fifth place doesn't mean that they're bad. All of these are really good. I would reach for any one of them at any time. Even though this one is concentrating more on the single barley that's being used, it does lack a little bit of depth. And it seems to me, even though it says that it's aged, what is this aged again? Almost five years. The barley that they're using is a little bit too citrusy for me to put it anywhere other than fifth place. All still very good, but that's kind of how I have them ranked. If you guys are familiar with Westland and you've had any of them, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. How would you guys rank them? Are they available in your market? Have you never seen them? And do all those things that YouTubers ask you to do. Like, subscribe, share, turn on that bell notification because I go live with the videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So really quick, once again, my lineup first place was the fifth edition Gariana, followed by the PX single cask, and then the standard release, their single malt, followed by the port finish single cask, and the second edition Collier. And from the looks of things in front of me with my glasses, I have some sipping to do later on today. I'm going to enjoy what's in the glasses and I hope you guys enjoy your journey. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.